Bishop Michael Curry talk about at Meghan and Harry's wedding. He opens up about what it was like to be a descendant of slaves presenting a sermon at the royal wedding. Bishop Michael Curry who delivered a soaring sermon at the 2018 wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle is opening up about his memories of that day. In a wide-ranging interview, Bishop Curry discusses his new book, Love is the Way, and describes what it was like to be a descendant of slaves and present a sermon in front of Queen Elizabeth. After I preached the sermon, I just remember it was like I could feel slaves around the place, Bishop Curry, 67, says. I don't mean to be spooky, but it was like their voice was somehow heard that day. I included one of their songs, There is a Barm in Gilead. It was like their voice, one of their songs, one of their descendants was there that day. The Queen was most gracious, he continues. The fact that all happened, for me, it's a sign of hope. It's a sign of hope that one who descends from people who were captured in the slave trade, probably the British slave trade, is brought from the shores of West Africa, to the shores of America, that one of their descendants was in the presence of the Queen of England, and he quoted one of their songs, that's hope that we don't have to be the way we've always been, it was with this emotion that Bishop Curry presented his sermon, The Power of Love, to the royal family and billions of viewers two years ago, many of the same themes appear in the bishop's book, which is a candid look at his personal hardships. He was a young boy when his mother went into a year-long coma before her death. And a guide to help readers overcome challenges from poverty to racism. The bishop also describes his own work as a civil rights activist and, later, his fight to gain recognition of LGBTQ people in the Episcopal Church. You can live a life based on and grounded in love. A love that's unselfish. That really does is seek the good and the welfare and the well-being of others, as well as yourself, he says about the book's main lesson. Curry says he saw this same type of powerful love between Harry and Meghan. What stood out for me was, these are two people who really do love each other, he says. It brought together two nations, Britain and the US but it brought together people from around the world. I realized that the love of two people for each other brought together, at least for a moment, a world of differences and I think that is a parable of what real love can do. While Bishop Curry isn't currently in touch with the couple, he says that he continues to pray for them. He also says he was astonished by the amount of attention he got in the days and months after the royal wedding, and was inspired by the conversations their wedding started. In two years, I've had more of those kinds of conversations about faith and life and love, than I had in 40 years, he explains. Bishop Curry hopes that by teaching people about the power of love, it will help create a more just America. My dream for America is that we will live out the true potential of the ideals of this country. We haven't lived up to those ideals, Bishop Curry says. My dream for America is that we will live out the ideals of human equality, of brother and sisterhood, of e pluribus unum, from many different and diverse people, one people. Bishop Curry's work as a religious leader has been guided by this principle and he sees similar values in Meghan, who has been using her platform to encourage Americans to vote in the presidential election in November. I say, go for it, Bishop Curry says of Meghan's activism. We need people to lift up other people. There's enough negativity and enough putting people down, there's enough hurt. We don't need any more hurt. He continues, we need help. We need healing. She does that. She's lifting up women. And we need somebody to lift up women, lift up people. Lift up people of all colors. The truth is, a rising tide raises all ships. Bishop Curry, from Chicago, who delivered a 14-minute sermon during Prince Harry and Meghan wedding, said in an interview. After I preached the sermon, I just remember it was like I could feel slaves around the place. I don't mean to be spooky, but it was like their voice was somehow heard that day. He explained that the Queen was gracious about including the hymn Bar Meng Gilead, which was sang by slaves to lighten their misery. Bishop Curry added that the move had all been a sign of hope and he felt it was a positive sign of change to come. He added, that one of their descendants was in the presence of the Queen of England, and she quoted one of their songs. That's hope that we don't have to be the way we've always been. The bishop added that he sees many of his own values displayed by Meghan and hopes her platform will encourage others. Speaking about Meghan's recent activism, he said, we need people to lift up other people. In Britain alone over 17 million viewers tuned in to watch the royal wedding. 
in addition to many more people in a variety of countries across the globe. Bishop Michael Curry, who was labeled passionate after being given the opportunity to speak freely about whatever he thought would be appropriate at the wedding, presented a sermon entitled The Power of Love. While he is no longer in contact with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, the 67-year-old has spoken on numerous occasions about the love he felt between the couple and its power to bring unity across borders. Speaking during the sermon, he said, Oh there's power, power in love. Not just in its romantic forms, but any form, in a shape of love. He claims to have had more conversations about life and love since the wedding than in the past 40 years. Bishop Michael Curry has now penned a book featuring the same themes of love, power and hope which includes his fight to gain recognition of LGBTQ people in the Episcopal Church. And the royal preacher also delves into the challenges he has experienced throughout his life and the work he has done as a civil rights activist. He explained the main lesson his book aims to teach is that it's possible to live a life based in an unselfish love that seeks the best interest of others as well as yourself. Thank you for watching. If you like our video, would you please help us like? Share and subscribe our channel. Wish you happy to see our videos. Thank you very much.